Candace, you want to take this first one? Sure. A wall that supports the weight of part of the structure in addition to its own weight. A wall that supports the weight of part of a structure in addition to its own weight. Is it a load-bearing wall, a foundation wall, a hip wall, or a support wall? Let's give them a chance to try to answer it. Load-bearing wall, foundation wall, hip wall, or support wall. Okay, I had to read it. Mm-hmm. And okay, we got A's, we got A's, we got A's, lots of A's. Yep. And I think they are absolutely correct. That is the load bearing wall. The load bearing wall. What I happens it? if we remove a load bearing wall, you guys? It no longer bears the load, right? <laughs> and your house starts to sink. All right. So, well, we did have a question in the chat before we move to the okay. next one. And that was uh, Sapna asking us if we could go over the habendum clause. So do you want to cover that? Yes. Okay, hold on. Oh, yes, I see it. Habendum clause. So that's our wedding clause, right? Our clause that says, I'm giving you this property to have and to hold. We call it the, the habendum clause, but we jokingly call it the wedding clause because that mm -hmm. to have and to hold language isn't there. I have the right to grant it to you, and I'm doing so, right? Candace, Which you got anything course, to add on that? No, I mean, just reminding that that's part of the deed. You wouldn't find that into the in the promissory note. It's going to be the deed. Right, right. All right. right. And then right. we have a question about Fannie Mae and Freddie Mae. So, <laughs> Miriam, what, are you asking what it is, or did you have a specific question about it? So go ahead and she let us know. She must again. <laughs> and while we're waiting she for must her to be <laughs> TG-13 memory check. I know. Mean, <laughs> it's Monday night. Do we have time for that? Um, yeah, do you want to maybe that. answer that one while we wait for her to tell us in the chat what? Uh, yeah. What okay. So the property, which generally speaking, cannot be moved. This is, I got to change my screen, make it bigger because I am blind. This includes wells, minerals, or stock in a mutual water company. Is it chattel? Is it real property? Is it personal property? Or is it Liz Pendens? Remember the thing here, cannot be moved, generally speaking. That's our clue, right? All right. Okay. So I think everybody's kind of getting this one. Give everybody a second to think yep, about that. Got bees, 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 lots of bees. And that real is the property. key, right? That is the key that it is immovable. 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 Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. Now, um, uh, they did go through, and Miriam said she was confused about when we use either for loans. So we don't use Fannie or Freddie for loans. They are part of the secondary mortgage market. So both Fannie, Freddie, and Jenny Mae, um, they go ahead and they buy already made loans, excuse me, already made loans from the bank. So once a bank makes a loan to the general public, they package those together and then they can be bought on the secondary mortgage market by Fannie, Freddie, or Jenny. And I think it's confusing too because when they talk about like Fannie Mae's, oh shoot, I'm trying to remember, is it home, home gain or home, what is that called? Mm. Uh, there's a type of loan that Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac kind of says, we're going to buy these. And they call oh. them Fannie Mae and Frank, but they're not really made by them. They're made by the bank. But that's, yes. that can always confuse me. Yeah. I think that sometimes is confusing to people. And so let's think about, um, let's talk about that for a second, because let's yeah. say we're Bank of America. Bank of America makes all of these loans. And remember, they make all of this money off of interest and fees. Let's not forget the fees. But they make a ton of money off that interest. But usually a mortgage is 30 years. And they don't want to have to wait 30 years in order to get their money. So what do they do? They sell them early. They're not going to get all their interest, but they're going to get some of that interest early. So they're selling them to the secondary mortgage market. So when you're talking to a mortgage banker or a mortgage broker, sometimes they'll reference loans talking about or speaking about, can this loan be purchased? Would it be okay with? Is it suitable for Fannie Mae or Freddie? Freddie Mac is his name, I guess, for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. So that's why you sometimes hear it in everyday language, because it's not it's not because they're going to make the loans. It's because the bank wants to make sure they are making loans that will be purchased by either of them. Mm -hmm. 
like home ready was the one I was trying to think of. Ah, uh, yes. Does. Okay. Yeah, they've just kind of pre it's like a pre agreed upon loan that they're going to be interested in. All right. What about this one, Candace? You want to do the next one? Sure. An estate for any fixed period of time. An estate for any fixed period of time. Is it a life estate? Is it an estate at will? Is it a defeasible estate or an estate for years? What say you in the chat? Life estate, estate at will, defeasible estate, or estate for years. All right, Chris has given us a D, estate for years. We got Ds, we got Ds, we got Ds. I think it is safe to say the answer is D. Now, because you all were so quick on telling me it was D, can anybody explain to me what a defeasible estate is? I just like that word for some reason. Defeasible. Mm -hmm. Who can tell me what a defeasible estate is? To me, defeasible, I always remember it as defeat, right? It can be defeated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we've got our fee simple determinables and our fee simple conditionals with a condition. That's right. Whenever I think of a defeasible estate, I think about the fact that somebody's ownership could be ended and it wasn't their choice. When you have a fee simple absolute, it means somebody is giving you that ownership and now it's yours. You could sell it, you could will it, you could, you know, mortgage it, do, give it as a life estate, make it into a freehold, a non freehold estate. You can do what you want and it's yours. It's going to be yours. I'm going to say forever, but like yours and your heirs, it just travels down. But when you have a defeasible estate, we're talking about the fact that somebody said, here, you can have this property, but now here's a condition. Here's a rule that you can't break or that you have to follow. And if you don't follow that rule, if you don't do what we're telling you to do, then you would lose your ownership. So it's not going to, it could possibly be for 40 years. It could possibly be for two years. It could possibly be for 600 years. You don't know, but there's a chance that you might unwillingly lose the ownership. So that mm -hmm. wasn't a lot. Why don't you go for the next one? A court order which prevents an entity from performing an action or restrains an entity from continuing an action. Ooh. Specific performance, injunction, Liz pendants, or mandate. And the emphasis here, guys, is only a court, only a judge can do this. Which one is the one that only a judge can issue? Uh -huh. Well, I guess I should say other things, but this is the big one. This is very judgy. <laughs> So an injunction, right? If I sell you a house and I put a condition in, in it, a fee simple de, a condi, uh, determ, or excuse me, feasible to feasible condition that says you're never allowed to tear down the timber on the land or you're not allowed to do so for 30 years. And I drive by one day and you're doing that and I want you to stop because I'm going to take it back from you. I could get a judge to order an injunction to make you stop doing something. You're starting to build something you're not allowed to. Something's happening. The judge, you want the judge to issue an order stopping you. Another thing I think of, Candace, my dad lives in a neighborhood that's older, but for some weirdo reason, the guy who built the neighborhood wanted all the yards to be open. He didn't want any fences. Like it's an 80 year old neighborhood, and nobody's ever broken this rule. It's a, that's a D condition. It's not a city rule. They can have city standards. They could have, you know, they could have a fence. The guy, the one guy, the neighbor got a dog. The dog was unruly. The electric fence wasn't working for him. So he put up a fence and my dad says, what can I do? I can call the city, right? No, the city doesn't care. That's a deed restriction. So what he, could he do? He could get together with those neighbors if he wanted to, he didn't want to, but, and, and go to ask a judge to make the guy stop, take the fence down, right? That would be an injunction, getting to do that, right? Exactly. Great put, put example. Up. Yeah. All right. Let's get another one up there for him. Um, okay. Here you go, Candace. Here's a good one. The right to take a property by the government for some important public use. The right to take a property by the government for some important public use. Is it A, down zoning? Is it B, eminent domain? Is it C, subordination? Or is it D, police power? What do we have here? It is blowing up here. What do we have? It is B, 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 B. Good job, ladies and gentlemen. Eminent domain. We know that eminent domain is when the government comes in and says, uh, we need this more than you do. Thanks. 
But if they do <laughs> take it, they have to pay you fair market value for it. They've got to compensate you for it. And even if you don't want it, you want them to take it, or you don't like what they're giving you, you're still going to lose your property. Yep. You're just going to have to take it to a judge to talk about the how muches and stuff like that. You know what's interesting, Candace, is that the a book that I had the other day, they were sending us the new textbooks to review, and you've probably seen this before. Some of the books include eminent domain as a police power, and some don't. Hmm. So the way I look at it, like the way I think about it, is the police power is the government controlling what I do with the property, my property, my private property. Eminent domain is them actually taking it from me. So I was always taught that it was separate, you know? See, and I've always taught that it's the same. It's the powers that the government has. So the government has mm -hmm. the power to take your property. Yeah. The government has the power to tax your property. The government has the power to tell you what to do with it. So police power. Oh, and then, you know, you then you have the power to, of course, get it if somebody dies. So I think of them as a power, but I wouldn't put it as police power. I just think of it as a power. Right. This new textbook was it was calling it police power. I'm like, nah, police, I think of policing, you know? Yeah. I don't like, know. Just something that I was like, huh. Yeah. Splitting hairs, but it's kind of a, a change in the way that we originally thought about it. Yeah. All right. So the next question is. The personal revocable and non-assignable authority to do a specific act or acts on the land of another. Is it a deed? Is it a title? Is it a bill of sale? Or is it a license? What do y'all think? I always love when the answers are in caps like this. I feel like they're yelling at me. Like <laughs> when I was when I was when I was pulling these up, I was thinking about that, how that drives you crazy. I was like, oh, because this is going to drive Tiana's crazy because they're it all in It is. Shit. They're <laughs> yelling at us. A deed, a title, a bill of sale, or a license. Like, come on. Like, you know, take it down a notch. Take it down. And if I have to so tell somebody to take it down. is the answer. Is it? So what, tell us, you guys, put in the chat, what's the difference between a license and an easement? Ooh. Like what's a what's a difference? I always think about it like this. That's how I keep her, keep these straight. What do you guys think? What's when you think of the difference when you were trying to explain to somebody the difference between a license and an easement? What because both do? of them are a right to use. But, yeah. Hmm. What is the difference? Why are you making them think hard on a Monday night? Yes, I'm. I'm torching y'all on Monday night. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, Chris, a good point. Revocable. The license, I could revoke it. I could say, don't come over here anymore. If I let you come use my pool and all of a sudden I decide you were too messy, I didn't want you in my pool anymore, I could pull my license back, right? I could revoke it. It's not like an easement where I have to let you keep doing it, right? Yeah. There you go. I love what Carol said. Yeah. The license can be granted and the easement comes with the land. All right. I'm going to give a... There you go. Based on the principle that discrimination is illegal, unenforceable, and contrary to public policy. Based on the principle that discrimination is illegal, unenforceable, and contrary to public policy. Is it fair housing laws, real estate settlement laws, redlining, or truth in lending? What you got there? What say you? Is it A? Y'all knew it was. You knew that it was fair housing laws. We don't discriminate up in here. So not yep. what we do. So we got make sure you know the difference between redlining, blockbusting, and steering. Mm -hmm. Everybody always seems to get blockbusting and steering kind of scrambled up, no, right? I don't I, know. I've it's... never figured out quite why it always made such <laughs> different things. How do you explain blockbusting and then I'll explain steering? Well, I think of blockbusting, I'm coming in, I'm busting up your block. Like I'm I'm trying to panic people into selling. I'm saying, hey, somebody, you know, somebody's moving in, things are changing. You better get out quick, sell it to me quick based on whatever crazy racist ideas they're working off of, right? And playing on people's bad thoughts and I'm getting them busting it up. Yep. That's the way I look at blockbusting. And I always think about steering and putting buyers in your car and putting them in certain neighborhoods mm -hmm. or avoiding some neighborhood. It's how I always think about it because steering has to do with buyers and blockbusting or panic peddling has to do with sellers. Yeah. Another good point. I didn't think about that. Um, yeah. Personal property used in a business which is attached to the property is it an amenity, a business amenity, a fixture, or a trade fixture. Hmm. Business and personal property is the ticket there, right? I always thought when I was studying, this one was confusing to me when I was new. 
when it was my first class because I'm like, well, wait a minute. I just got through learning what a fixture was. And now they're telling me about this trade fixture. What the heck? Right mm -hmm. now, this is personal property and a fixture is supposed to be real property. Yeah. But if that's that special exception where because we're going to take it with us when we go for commercial property. Right. If the tenant does damage moving it, they got to fix it just like normally I would if I was tenant mm -hmm. damaging something. But I'm allowed to take it with me. All right. That was I always easier. Let's I always Hand think to uh, Maria or Irma, you know, for the total circumstance test, the idea of, you know, how does a judge tell of whether or not it's a fixture? And one of those, the I, whether it's Irma or, um, well, the R, I should say, I can spell, the R is about the relationship, whether it's Irma or Maria's relationship. And so you are the tenant, you need to take it with you. Mm -hmm. Take it with you. You're the tenant. You were just trying to have a business. You weren't trying to make the landlord richer. Right. Well, that's true. All right. Let me go for it. Liens that affect only a specific parcel of the owner's property. Liens that affect only a, only affect a specific parcel of a person's property. Is it general liens? It's yelling at me. Specific liens. Income <laughs> tax or judgment liens. <laughs> Yelling at me. What am I supposed to do? Who love these? Don't they know? I can just see my mom in caps writing all these answers. Like, please, my. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So I got distracted. Sorry. It's be specifically. <laughs> uh, specifically. Yelling yeah, at me. How? Oh, but, no. Okay. Let's give some examples of specific leaves in the chat. What do you guys oh, think? Yes. Give me some examples. Let's see the examples, you guys. And Krista, you are right. I am a goofball. <laughs> that is very true. I have never tried to hide it. I never. And she's like herself. all the time. She's yeah. so funny. She cracks me up. <laughs> My mama calls it having not a lick of sense. <laughs> oh, all right. That's yes. a property, property tax, tax, mechanics lien. Yes, mm -hmm. mechanics lien. Mortgage lien. What would be the flip side of that? Give me an example of a general lien, y'all. General lien. General lien, I think of a judgment lien, right? If it's a general lien, I think of a judgment lien or an IRS lien. You know, federal speak, tax. There's something about the word general lien. It just kind of rolls, don't you think? General yeah. lien. General lien. General lien. General lien. I think it's got to be my third favorite phrase in real estate. Like my first <laughs> is an extraterritorial jurisdiction. I love yeah, the way that too. sounds. And I love <laughs> application. And then I have to say general lean. It's like general. What about ad valorem? Ad valorem is kind of a form. Ad valorem. Thing. It sounds so formal. So let's to ask him, what is ad valorem? You guys, Ooh. since I, yeah, let's challenge him a little bit here with some weird words. What does ad valorem mean? Anybody know what ad valorem means? What's our definition? Oh, and as we're doing that, I guess we didn't confirm that they were right. It's income tax. Income oh, tax yeah. and judgment liens are general liens. But well, let's see if you can tell me what ad valorem means. A vet said, what is extraterritorial jurisdiction? Ah, ha, ha. <laughs> Otherwise known as an ETJ. It is the idea that a government entity, a municipality, has the right to create zoning rules or zoning ordinances outside their city limits. So if you can imagine being in a city, we know all cities are in counties. So you have a city and then you're going to have a bigger county. Well, if you're in the city limits and they say this is residential and then whoop, there's the imaginary line and it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, county ordinances. They don't want to have like a strip club next to the elementary school or the residential area. The city has the right to go in my state about one to three miles outside of city limits in order to create these these ordinances to help the city or whatever the municipality, the town, whatever, the village, to help it grow and make sure everybody's covered. So extraterritorial jurisdiction, extra territory you have jurisdiction in. Mm -hmm. All right. And yes, Maria has already said and have. Um, validated in the chat that it is according to value. According I don't remember to who did the last one. I'm, I've been so wrapped up in this. Um, I'm, I think, I'm having so much. I don't know. You want to do this was, one? Sure. Although I think I was the last one, so it was a shouting at me, but that's okay. Permanent mortgage oh, sorry. loans. <laughs> they were shouting. 
Permanent mortgage loans made by a lender to a borrower once improvements on the borrower's land, new construction, have been completed. The proceeds of the loan are used mainly to pay off the construction loan. So what is it? Is it a takeout loan, a short-term loan, interim loan, or substandard loan? What say you? Carol said maybe B. Tyrone said A. Rebecca said takeout loan. Yes, it's kind of like you called Uber Eats. Or you called Grubhub. It's a takeout loan. That's what it is. The people mm-hmm. were less sure of that one than the other ones. That's a good one. I'm glad we did that one there because everybody was kind of just yeah. like the other ones. They were like boom, 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 boom. They had it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The so takeout loan is a permit loan. Mm-hmm. All right. Next one: property that is generally considered movable is a real property. Personal property. Oh, there's our word. Ad valorem. Or what's that say? What? What's the last one? Well, I've, been seen. Term. I've never seen that before. I'm going to have to look it up. Yeah. Yeah. Look that one up because I don't know what that is. I'm like, wow. got me stumped on that. Let's go. Oh. Letters. Wow. Oh, my goodness. The dog's being bad, guys. Sorry. Butters said somebody's coming to kill us, Mom. He is I sand- don't think it's a real Santorum. It's not. Wow. Okay. It's not real. Okay. Um, so property that is considered movable, personal property, sometimes we call it chattel, right? Depending on the, on the question, chattel mm-hmm. could be on there. Too. I've never All seen right. IBID Centurum. If you have seen that in the chat before, let us know because no, we ain't never seen it. Seen that. I have never seen that. Mm-hmm. So, all right. Next one, Candace. Personal property, since you gave my name an accent. Personal property that is attached to real property and is legally treated as real property. Hey, personal property that is attached to real property and is legally treated as real property. And it was that circumstance test that I was just talking about, total circumstance. Is it chattels, joists, fixtures, or flashings? We got C's. And if my people are here from my my nights, we know we like some carrots up in here with all those C's. So we got fixtures Mm -hmm. is our correct answer. Let's see. What time is it? We got time for you. You want to do a couple more since I picked those out, but we got through them so fast. Everybody was so smart tonight. We didn't even have to think. All right. So let's do, let's do another question. Let's pull up another one. See if I can find a good one. Explains which contracts need to be written out to be enforceable. Is it statute of limitations, statute of writing, statute of communication, or statute of fraud? I'm going to take a wild guess and say the answer is statute of something. <laughs> I don't know why, but my right. spidey senses are tingling. Tingling. They're <laughs> tinkering. Statute of frauds, right? So if we have a statute of frauds, if we have the statute of frauds that says that certain contracts have to be in writing to be enforceable, most real estate contracts, except for our shorter term leases, right? But what if I had a verbal contract? What if I had a verbal real estate contract? Could it still be valid? Yes. Could we and I make a verbal real estate contract? We could. But if we started arguing with each other and we wanted to take it to court, the judge is going to say, show it to me. And if I and say, if well, you we don't have it in me. writing, we are out of luck. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. <laughs> Thank you. We have this much fun where we're, just doing, where we're not even working, no we guess. We're always <laughs> having a good time. All right, let's do one more, Candace. You, uh, we've already done that one. Let's do a different one. Uh, ooh, 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 this is a good one. Do I do that one? Yes. It stops anyone from taking a position that is in conflict with a previous position or a previous action? Is it commingling? Is it a stopples? Is it a writ of execution? Or is it steering? Mm-hmm. Commingling, a stopples, a writ of execution, or steering? <laughs> All right. Oh, there's butters for B. We got B. Butters, stone, and B. I'm going to. I think she muted because he was barking. And B is our right answer. It is a stopples. You can't say and make it look like you're going to do one thing and be like, ah, I changed my mind. It, no, we got the doctrine of a stopples in there. That's going to stop that from happening. And, oh, Felicia has a question. You have prep agent and want to know what part should you study from first? 
Uh, should you learn all your vocabulary first? I think starting with vocab is a good general place to start, Felicia, because if you don't know your vocab, then you really are going to, how are you going to answer the questions? I'm not going to say memorize all the vocab 100% before you tackle anything else, but you should get pretty, pretty darn good at that vocab. So, oh, good. We got those thumbs up. Perfect. Great. Very we just want to make sure we're doing it. So I think that's it for me. You got anything to add, Miss Maria? No. Uh, one thing I wanted to tell them about for the prep agent members, too, mm -hmm. is don't forget. I wanted to show this because somebody asked the other day. So when you're on your webinars, if you want to listen to the prior webinars that Candace, me, or Stu have done, and I know you tell people this all the time too, Candace, but here's where you find those. You scroll down from the current ones, the upcoming ones, and you look at the previous one. Somebody asked me that today in the email, so I wanted to tell you guys about that too. And if you're prep, guys, if you're wondering what all these different parts to prep agent are, I have a video on it on my YouTube page. Like. Don't just go with yeah. the questions. There's so much more to prep agents. So if you're like, okay, I've bought this thing and I know there's some questions. What else did I get? Go watch my YouTube video. It's on my page. It's not like seven minutes or something like that, but I want you to get your, your money's worth. But more importantly, I want you to pass this test. So there's that. Yes. Uh, yes. For Lori sure. said good night to us and good night to Butters. I know. Isn't Butters the best name ever? <laughs> He's sitting here quietly now. All right, guys. Well, Candace will see you tomorrow, and I will see you all next Monday. Yes, I Thanks will see y'all tomorrow night. Bye.